anything you want to know about me, I'm happy to tell you, but we're really not here to talk about me. We're going to talk about your trading and what's really going to make a difference for it and how you can trade with the big boys. So uh, here's what you're going to get today. We're going to show you exactly how to trade alongside the big institutional traders. We're going to show you how to get precise entries and then define your exits and have big profit potential and small risk. And I'm going to show you how you can get started today for free. Now, something about that is that really David and myself and everybody here we're all traders okay and we're not um we're not here to try and we're not wanting we're not really sales people or marketers that's not really what we do all right but we are a trading education company and um that's not actually a salesy thing it's actually for free we're going to let you try it and see if what we say is real or not all right so there are some fundamental truths that we want to talk about here as it relates to trading. And before I dive into that, I want you to know that I know that you're busy people. I know that you had to move whatever you had to move around and that you have lives outside of, you probably weren't sitting around with nothing to do here before the webinar. So I respect your time. I appreciate you being here. And my promise to you is that the time that we have together here, I'll give it everything I've got. And I will have the time here really make a difference for your trading if you'll allow it to. And what that would look for you like for you is that you're going to want to make sure that you really turn off any outside distractions. So put your phone on silent, close any other pages that you have up and be really present here for the next 45 minutes. If this is really going to make a difference for you, there's no big sales pitch coming at the end. We're going to be talking about principles that I have used throughout my last 14 years as a trader and what I've helped a lot of traders learn and implement in their own trading. So we'll be getting into that. And, you know, a little bit about me, if you don't know anything about me, in 2006, I started trading the Russell 2000 futures market. That was back when it was traded on CME. And some of you might remember that. And then from there, actually, it traded on CME and then CME sold it to ICE. And when it sold to ICE, all the volume went away. Now, I don't know if any of you were trading it then or if you remember, but that was actually a day trader's dream come true. It was a $20 tick, $200 per point. It moved a lot. There was a, a lot of volatility. Not as crazy as the NASDAQ today, but... There was plenty of volatility and then it got sold to ice and all that went away. And I went from, I had this really uh, ridiculous system that I was using that no one ever should have made money with, but I was making eight to $25,000 a day trading the Russell doing this. If I told you what you, what I was doing, you wouldn't even believe that it worked. It was just, it was beyond simple and it only worked for a little while. I guess that was the hint. And, uh, I found myself not really knowing what to do next, and I moved over into the S&P 500, and it was just a different kind of beast. I didn't really know what I was doing with it. And I would just say to you that as a, you know, wherever you are in your trading journey, I know some of you on here personally, I know some of you are over seven figures this year in profit. I know some of you are on your way to that. And I imagine that we have everything between that and, You've been doing this for a long time and you're trying to figure it out and you know everything in between there and what i'd say to you is that it's likely that i've been right there wherever you are i whatever stage you're in i've probably been there i've had my worst day in 2008 or 2009 i lost 162 thousand dollars you know i've been really all over i've tried every kind of uh, trading strategy and method and I've gone from uh, thing to thing to thing and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of that that I think a lot of traders struggle with and then there was a moment one day where I was staring at the charts I was frustrated and it felt like for the first time really ever I really saw 
how the market works, what actually is moving the market, where the big institutional traders are going to push the market around and where they want to trade. And I'm not going to tell you that it's just been this easy, you know, it's all downhill from there and it was just super easy after that. There was a lot to learn from that point about uh, how to actually be a good trader. And for the last three years, I've committed my time to developing methods and tools and strategies for traders and coaching traders to become successful. So we're going to dive into a little bit of that. So why am I telling you all of that? Not because I want to impress you or not because I think that uh, you were wondering, wow, I just can't wait to hear all about the guy that's going to be doing the webinar today. But I want you to know that I'm not a guy in a diner. I'm not a guy that just, I don't have an answer for everything. But I have been doing this for a long time. And I've lost a lot of money and I've made a lot of money doing it. And I think more importantly, I've helped a number of traders go from where they were, maybe not winning very much or even losing, to moving into being profitable. And so, you know, I want you to know that I'm actively engaged. I trade every day. And I'm not talking about something that I have theories about. These are tried and tested and they're battle proven. And I think what we're going to show you today is that if what I just said wasn't true, we'd be crazy to be doing this. You know, so we'll just we'll dive into it here. So the three fundamental truths that you really have to come to accept as a trader. And here's the first one. So lagging indicators don't work. You probably if you've ever watched a video of ours or you've ever heard me talk, you already know that I say that you probably already know that for yourself. And I'm guessing that if you're struggling, your accounts probably know that. But here's the thing, even when they appear to work, they still don't work. And stay with me and I'll show you what I mean about that. So why is it exactly? I wanna look right here, we're gonna point out, this is actually last night, if this looks familiar. Now, sorry if my chart's confusing. I use blue for down candles and yellow for up candles. This is a uh, five minute chart of the S&P 500, and this was last night after the sell-off. If you're trading futures, this probably looks familiar to you. Now, what you can see at the bottom of my screen was a MACD. Now, I didn't try and pick something out that I thought the best or whatever. I just knew that a MACD was a common indicator that traders will use, and so I went and grabbed it. And what you can see is that the MACD actually, I should have put the price on here, but it triggered a long at 33.49 quarter. When that candle closed, the MACD had crossed up. And unless I don't know anything about MACDs, um, that triggered the buy. And what happened is that the target, which was at 56, you would have had 6.75 points, but your risk would have been five and a quarter points because your risk really needs to be down below that swing low which was where it was to begin with. Now, that looks like I'm guessing that if there were struggling traders or, uh, you know, somebody, and look, no matter where you are, if you've never been a struggling trader, stay tuned, it's coming. Because nobody gets to the top or you don't really excel as a trader if you haven't struggled to get there. You know, when I meet traders who tell me like, yeah, my first year I made a million dollars, I go, okay, well, just wait till your second year. You know, it, it's highly unlikely that you just right out of the gate get it and, you know, it's great. It's like, yeah, I went to the Olympics. I didn't train, but I won a gold medal. So, um, you know, it's just not likely you're going to go back and win another one. So that's this trade. Triggered along at 49 quarter and 6.75 points in profit and five and a quarter points of risk. It's not terrible. It's a bit more risk than I would want to take, but it worked. I mean, this was one of the ones that worked. Here's a trade that we posted in our live trade signals and don't get too caught up on that. I just want to, I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. We posted a buy signal at 33.46 and we posted the risk at 33.44 before it happened. And we posted a target at 56 and ultimately and at 67, which we adjusted down just a little bit uh, to 65. But first target, 10 points. So using the MACD, 
and this was pretty much a falling knife last night if you were watching it, using the MACD, which actually worked, you would have gotten in at 49 quarter. If you knew where the big traders were going to be trading, it was obvious that they were going to be trading down in this area. And so we put a buy in at 46 and the target was for 56 initially. And then we had a bigger target out of there and only two points of risk. So the thing that is, you know, to me, what stands out about that is that if you were that it's, it's a very big difference in your, uh, you know, what it actually takes to be profitable if you're risking five and a quarter points to make 6.7 points. Okay, so you go from a 1.2 to 1 risk ratio to a 5 to 1 risk ratio. So, you know, just a really big difference. And if you, if you don't understand, what happens with a lagging indicator is it's lagging price. So you end up being late to the party and because you're late to the party, you have less room for the trade to work and you have to be exposed to more risk. So even when it looks like it works, like the MACD, we'll go back to that right there. Even when it looks like it works, it really doesn't work. If you're trading on a one-to-one -one risk to reward, you better be right a lot, okay? Which is just not the reality for a lot of traders. So truth number two, the latest craze in trading order flow is lagging. I know I'm probably gonna get hate mail from this, but there's really, stay with me, don't dismiss what I'm saying yet. There's two things order flow traders are watching. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm right about what I'm saying here. I just want you to consider that what I'm saying, maybe there is something to it. And I'm telling you the order flow is lagging. Now, don't take it as the truth. Let's just look and see here. All right, two things that order flow traders are watching. One, executed orders. This already happened in the past. Therefore, it's lagging. The, this is the time in cells, the tape. It's showing orders that were executed at a certain time, at a certain price, and the number of orders executed. Now, the only reason I can see that is because it already happened in the past, and that would make it a lagging indicator. So this already happened, happened in the past. I think we're getting to that point. I know order flow is all the latest craze right now, and everyone thinks if I just learned to trade, if to read order flow, that's the holy grail. But stay tuned. I don't know if that's really the holy grail. And I've been down that road ten times, and you know there's no water in that well so far. So second thing about what you're looking for as a trader is that pending orders. That's what you're watching as an order flow trader. What are where are the will? These are in theory representing willing buyers and willing sellers. Now, anyone who's gone into the order flow trading world, even just a little bit, has the question, well, how do I know if they're actually going to trade at that price or are they spoofing? And if you're not familiar with that term, basically meaning they're gonna put their orders in to artificially uh, drive the price of an asset one way or the other. So they want to show that, yeah, we want to buy here or we want to sell here. And I'll give you an example of that. So you look right here and it actually walks through here. I don't know how, how well you can see this on your screen, but I'll just walk you through here. Uh, David, can you guys see my mouse? I'm not sure. And I don't see the chat or anything. So David's managing all of that. So if I'm messing up, yeah, he's going to just come I can on. see it. I can see your mouse fine. Okay, great. So right here, it just says there's someone who wants to sell at the highest price. So I'm going to just walk you through here. There's This would not be 10. This would be like 1,000 in the S&P. So there's an institutional trader who wants to trade up here. And what happens is they put their order in to go short, a limit order. And then the price is trading over here, but they don't want to get short here. They want to get short over here. So what they do is they put in all these orders over on this side that make it look like, on the buy side, that make it look like that they want to buy. So what does that do? It has traders buy in front of this thinking, oh, somebody wants to buy a bunch of these and I better get in before they get in so I can drive the price of this up. And, you know, I want to get this move up here. 
Now, if you've ever watched order flow trading and you've ever seen things like Bookmap and some of these other uh, ways that they represent things visually, they're going to show you some, you know, some of them even have a heat map where they'll show you these orders. So what do they do? They drive the price higher over here and then they pull all the orders over here because they never really intended to buy here to begin with. They just wanted to drive the price up to there. So two types of, of orders or what you're looking for in order flow. One is what's already happened in the past that's lagging. And you don't know why that happened. You don't know why somebody bought or sold a thousand contracts. Were they covering? Do they, was it a hedge against another huge position? You really have no idea. Or you have no way of really knowing if somebody actually even intends to trade. And now today there's all these uh, algorithms and HFT funds that are doing this so fast. I mean, they're changing this thousands of times faster than you can blink. So it just makes it very difficult to know what is it that you should be watching or not watching. Now, here's my disclaimer about order flow trading. I know some really good order flow traders and that consistently make money. And I'm not knocking order flow trading. I'm just telling you it's lagging. And some of these traders have really mastered this art and are very good at uh, being able to read what's going on in the market from order flow. But I'm going to tell you something, and I've been saying this for years, that these guys all just end up trading where I'm trading, not using any order flow and not doing all the work they're doing. It's just not as difficult as they're trying to make it. But they do it because of the lagging indicators out there. It probably is one of the better things, one of the harder things to learn, but you know, certainly better than using a MACD or something like that. By the way, as we go through this, I'm not pausing for questions, but definitely go ahead and put all your questions in the chat. And you know, we can have your yeah, buts, how abouts, what ifs, uh, all of that. Put all that in the chat and we'll get to it as much of it as we can as we have time. And um, you know, if you think I'm dead wrong about something, let's talk about it, let's see. I'm open to learning. Okay, truth number three, you make money trading size, not by doing more trades. Let's let that sink in a minute. You make money trading size, not by doing more trades. Most traders think the way I'm going to make more money is I'm going to take more trades. That's not how you make more money. In the S&P, if you trade 100 lots, which is nothing, you can blink and get filled on 100 lots then you can, five points is uh, $25,000, okay? So it's not really uh, necessary that you, I mean, you can get to that by taking 20 trades. The question is, is would you rather have uh, 100 trades where you have to make a point on every one of them because you're trading a one lot, or would you rather have one trade where you make a point trading a hundred lot? And here's the thing, most traders are afraid to trade size. I know a trader who I would consider a very good trader, you know, got a very good fundamental understanding of the market. And consistently, I'll bet if we looked at the last five years of returns, I bet he's made five points a day on the S&P consistently. And he never trades more than a four lot because he's afraid to trade big size, but he's making five to eight, 10, 20 points a day some days, but he's afraid to trade size. So he stays at a four lot and he makes enough money to have a decent life. And traders don't, have not earned the right to trade size. This is not, I'm not telling you that if you even have the ability, I'm not telling you, you should go out and start putting on trades with a hundred lot. You put on one, micros are phenomenal. One of the best things, we didn't have micros when I started. One of the best things for teaching traders, I think, uh, in the beginning. Commissions are ridiculous, but that's the price that you pay. So they haven't earned the right to trade size. And how you earn the right to trade size is by consistently following your trading plan. So what do all institutional traders use to make decisions? If it isn't lagging indicators, if it's not order flow, if it um, you know, isn't the way that the moon is aligned with Saturn, and yes, there's traders who believe that really. 
So I want you to picture for a minute a trader with tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in buying power. And that's a typo. Uh, and what do you think they use to make decisions of where to buy and sell? I mean, really, what do you think they're doing? Do you think that they're sitting at their desk in Chicago or in New York or in London and they're saying, yeah, I think I'm going to get long on Apple because the MACD is crossing up. Or, you know, the ADX is uh, down, and so I think I'm going to get in. Or the stochastics are really oversold, so I think I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. Spend one day with an institutional trader, and you'll know that some of them don't even know what that stuff is. Never heard of it. So the way institutional traders trade is based on price. That's what matters. Where's price now? And where is it going? And what can I use to get to there? And that's all that matters. From where to where and ideally by when. Those are what really, really matter in the market. And if you if you took nothing else away from what we cover here today, take this away. If what you're using does not tell you to where the market is going and what it will use to get there from where it's going there and ideally by when it will get there it's not useful so that's kind of the smell test if it doesn't pass that it's probably that's probably not it okay that's not that's not really going to help so why doesn't everybody just trade on price why don't they just map it out ahead of time and just trade this way Flea market trader mentality. I've been there. Some of you have probably been there. And some of you are there right now. You've been to a flea market, right? You know, when you go, there's, a, or at least you know what it is. There's all around tables and different booths and whatever. And you just go and it's like you're trying to find the best deal. And you go from place to place to place to place. And you're looking for, you know, the best, what, what, what's out there? What's the best thing out there that I can find? Now, some of you, I'm, dis I'm describing your trading strategy or your approach to finding a trading strategy. You know, you have kind of tried it all and you're always looking for the next thing. And the reality is there is no holy grail out there. I know you've heard that and I know you still probably think that you're going to find it, you're going to crack it. And I think what we have here is pretty phenomenal, but it isn't the holy grail and I'm never going to tell you it's the holy grail. Another reason is it's so confusing. There's so many indicators, what actually works. And there's so many um, fake gurus out there who appeal to that flea market trader mentality. You know, they know that that is what traders are doing. They're thinking this is going to be the thing. And then they go for it and they pick out that one trade for the year that made 25 grand and they go one, one trade made $25,000. Yeah, the other one's lost 250,000 together, but this one made 25, you know, and they leave all that stuff out. And the other thing is, is they can't map out the market ahead of time. So how do you actually beat the banks at their own game? You identify high probability trade locations where the big money is likely to trade. Identify where that trade is invalid. That's important. You don't arbitrarily place some stop loss because well, I trade with a two-point stop loss. That's nice. I trade where the market tells me to trade. I trade where the big money's trading. Not some arbitrary number that I made up because it felt good or because I can handle being taking that kind of loss. If, if the trade is there and the risk is too big, I either size down or don't put the trade on. I don't say, well, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to move my risk up to here so I can feel better about it. Okay. And then the other thing is identify targets where the big money is going to drive the market. And yes, just like I showed you in the order flow example, where the big money is going to drive the market, what they do is they put their big orders in and then they drive the market to where they really want to trade so they can get the best pricing possible. That's what they're doing. All right. So enter prediction points. In 2007, we created an algorithm that identifies these prices for us every day. And what's really incredible is it's 
2020, and we've seen just about every kind of market condition through the Obama era, where the range was six or eight points a day in the S&P, and we've seen February through March, where the range was 200 or 250 points. And prediction points have this unique ability to adapt to the market movement and then changes in volatility, because it's actually based on what's really happening in the market. And just uh, uh, if some of you are into this, uh, a uh, something to nerd out on, we just rewrote the code for this to make it more in depth. And to generate prediction points for a single day, so one day's prediction points, and I'll show you what they look like. We actually look at 150 million different data points. So there's 150 million different data points that we look at, and then we generate these prediction points specifically for this trading day. So here's some examples, and I should have put the dates on here, but this is like, I think this is July 13th. And really all you want, this is a five minute chart, and I did the whole day, so you could get, this is from Globex all the way till the end of the day or, or the start of the next Globex session. And you can see how these react. And I actually randomly scrolled to different days and just pulled and, and screen took a screenshot of those. So I didn't go through and try and pick the ones that I thought were gonna be the best. I was a bit rushed on time and I randomly grabbed some different days. So that's what we're looking at. So I think this was uh, July 13th. This is the next day. Um, and you can see how, so notice how here there's fewer prices that would imply greater volatility during the day. Notice here how there's a bunch of, right kind of in the middle of the screen, there's a cluster of prices. And that would imply uh, less volatility throughout the day, given that there's so many prices so close together. I mean, if you just compare these, okay? So that's one of the things, they're not just, this is not support and resistance, these are not pivot levels. This is actually forecasting where the big institutions are going to trade, and then where the big gaps are in those areas of where they're going to trade. And you can see when the market gets over here, like when it gets into where these big openings are, it has a tendency to really move into the next level of liquidity. So we've seen these days, Here's another example of a day. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, these are available. We have these going all the way back to 2007. So this is this morning, and um, I just I took this screenshot earlier, and I just highlighted some of the places where the market interacts with prediction points. There's obviously other things on here, but I just took a few of these. You can see we got uh, you know the high right there. So that's that. Now we took it another step further. Now, what's the next step further? You can just copy our top trades each day using our proprietary prediction points. So a lot of traders would come to us and say, wow, these prediction points are amazing. I really love this. This looks incredible. And there's a bit of a learning curve, learning how to interpret prediction points, how to interpret the movement happening within these. So we actually have now are offering just copy our top trades. We'll give you exact entries, exact exits, and exact targets. So there's no long learning curve. I mean, literally, there's about five rules and you can fit them on a sticky note. And while you're following that, you can actually learn how we use prediction points while you learn to trade, while you learn the trade management skills. So you get the practice of putting trades on and taking trades off and learning how we view and see prediction points and how we trade and plan trades around them. And you get to learn how to put the trades on, take the trades off, and yes, there's an art to that. And you're learning trade management skills. So uh, kind of the best of both worlds with that. And then we also have real-time question and answers uh, all in the chat room where we run all of this where you can ask questions about trades. So there's exact rules for how we track stats, okay? So we say, this is how we treat every single trade. And there's no exceptions. This is exactly the way that it works. There's zero ambiguity for how we manage a trade. And you can always know what to do with the trade. Should I leave it open? Should I close it? All in a rule, in rules, you could literally fit on a sticky note, okay? 
So last week's stats, we did 49 and a half ES points last week. Now, if you're crushing that and you did more than 50 points last week on the S&P, the stats were, I believe we had 14 trades, 14 trades, okay? Not 40, not 400, 14. And we had nine winners. We had three break-even trades and two losers and 50 points, 49 and a half points. And then this week so far, we're up 26 and a half points uh, so far this week. And the goal is this is not probably ever going to be a thing that we're going to do 100 or 200 points a week. That's not really the goal. If you got really good at making 10 or 20 points a week, you'd really, I mean, that's uh, for a lot of traders, that's really life changing. So I'm going to say this ahead of time because some of you are going to sign up for this and come in here and go, oh, there's not that many trades. Yeah, there's not that many trades because number three, you make money trading size, not by doing more. So you earn the right to trade more size, not by doing more trades, not by taking you know, trades with a lower probability of winning. All right, so we're really only looking for the best trades. Here's the deal. I told you I'd show you how to do this for free and how to get started. So for a while, this has been completely unavailable and prediction points have been off the grid and nobody's really had access to them. And you certainly couldn't get them for free. So we're gonna let you try it for free. We're gonna let you have prediction points for free for an entire week. Now, uh, some of you are gonna ask, so I'll tell you the markets that are available for prediction points currently, and there's more coming. Actually, everything's coming sometime this year. I mean, everything. But right now we have the S&P, the NASDAQ, and those work the same way on the micros and the minis, and also the Russell and then crude oil. So those four markets, that's what's available for prediction points. If you trade something other than that, you can request for us to do it and it'll go on the list, but uh, all of the other markets are coming down the road here. But those are the four primary ones. You'll also get detailed training. Uh, I think there's about a dozen videos or so on exactly how we trade prediction points. So I'm gonna talk about two different things here. You can try prediction points for free. You're gonna get free training on how to do it. You're gonna get access to our members only chat. And then on top of that, we're gonna give you a free 30 minute coaching call. We wanna understand what it is that you're doing with your trading, how we can help you, that kind of thing. And then we're also going to give you, this is kind of against my better judgment, but I got outvoted. And so we're going to give you um, something that's worth $1,500 for free. Uh, this is uh, actually our most popular indicator ever. And we're gonna give it, now when I say indicator, we don't really do lagging stuff. So um, you can check out more of what we do, but this is our most popular one. And we're gonna give it to you for free for an entire year. It's typically you would pay $1,500, $1,497. And then once you sign up for prediction points, for the free trial on prediction points, it will give you the opportunity to try the live trade signals. That's where we actually tell you the trades or potential trade opportunities. And you'll be able to try that for $47. If you don't want to do that, no big deal. That's fine. Don't do it. If it sounds appealing to you, then come check it out for a week. And it's $47 bucks for the week. So there's the link. Uh, and you can see it's very short and easy to memorize. And so there's the link. We're actually going to send that out to you in an email. But if you're just dying to get signed up right now, you can go to offers.daytradelikeapro.com forward slash prediction points dash free. Okay, 